Hi guys, and let's continue our war here in part 5 of our game Angola and we are under a huge attack from the United States of America. I slept yesterday, I woke up in the morning and I found myself under a huge attack and they are meters away from getting my first homeland city there. So my advice guys, don't sleep. Okay, I'm joking, of course you should sleep. You should be in your full mental powers so you can understand this game and you can be smart to continue your wars and winning the games and of course making Meliodas proud. So let's continue our battle here, I am going to focus on the gunships, I'm going to produce a lot of gunships now because I'm going to need them for fast attacks and destroying their navy, uh, their land units, I'm expecting more and more for sure, this is not the only stack that the United States is going to send for us. So I'm going to start focusing on the helicopters there. So helicopter in the capital, here I'm going for the motorized infantry. I need more land units, more and more. I'm going to uh, get back my city of Kanagami and I'm going to rely now for my only four multiple rocket launches here in my homeland cities to defend me against the American stack that is advancing towards my capital. I'm going to keep my distance and try to always attack. I don't have a radar for now so my multiple rocket launchers they will not detect the uh, American units there when they are hiding in their conquered province. So I'm going to send my helicopter to uh, give me a vision for the artillery to engage. So I'm going to send that one gunship. I have more gunships by the way but they are a little bit far now. I'm sending them for the support but it's going to take a little bit of while. So here is uh, the American stack has appeared now and my multiple rocket launchers are engaging in this moment. This is a high alert situation. We need every unit here to defend our homeland cities. I have 2250 pieces of gold that I won from my last game. I uh, didn't want to spend them until the right moment. So I guess now in this crisis I'm going to try to use them perfectly in the right position but I don't know yet what I will need them for so I will keep them there and whenever I will find a chance to use them I will use them so I understand that a lot of people in the comments they sometimes accuse me of using gold I am a golder I am a pay to win player no there is no bragging to win a game with gold and show it to people. That, that is so stupid, to be honest. Of course, I respect people who um, use gold because they are the one who help this game to be developed and to be free for us to play. So I'm going to decide to use my little bit of gold to make one helicopter gunship. So you can see here, one helicopter gunship had cost me around 1,070, 750 pieces of gold. That's a lot for one gunship, to be honest. <laughs> so I play a whole game and win 2,000 gold, and later I spend them on one gunship. Uh, that's a little bit unfair, to be honest. Okay, so I continue my subject about gold. Um, I understand that sometimes people accuse me of using gold, but I never pay to win. I only use these 2,000, 3,000 good pieces of gold that I win from my previous games. So please stop these commands of you are a golder, you are a pay to win guy, you can do this without gold, you can do this without money. Please spare me from these um, unmotivating commands, okay? So let's continue our campaign. Here I'm continuing to take the lands uh, in the cities and the nations of Mali and blah blah blah. They are um, a conquered American lands there. Here I turned the capital Washington into rogue because I always attack the city and the United States get it back. He rebuilds army bases and other things. I go back and attack it. So now I decided to keep everything rogue here starting with the city of Hawaii, Washington, New York, everything. So he, this is his air force, he is attacking my uh, naval stack. I have three cruisers in there, two destroyers, all max level, he have no chance. And he is only attacking me with bombers, it's not even naval patrol aircrafts. So it's a waste of time, it's a waste of air force and they are going to die soon. 
even the destroyers that have no um, anti-air, they have four points defensive ability against aircrafts and three points defensive abilities against helicopters. So that's a good damage for two or three destroyers in one stack. And of course, I'm not going to speak about the cruisers that they have defensive abilities and they have anti-air also. You see here, the cruiser's anti-air has engaged and he lost two aircrafts from his stack of five. Sometimes you need to work your mind a little bit and attack smartly because it's not always attack, attack without a mind, because you will lose everything you have. This is uh, my artillery division here with 4 mobile anti-air, 1 motorized infantry and 5 multiple rocket launchers. Here my naval stack also is starting to bombard the coastal cities of Brazil. I'm going to help Syria with this campaign on Brazil because it appeared that Syria couldn't take down Brazil and of course he is my enemy so I need to help him to get him down because if he can't later he will come to me. And I don't want more enemies on my shores and on my homeland cities because I can't support a lot of enemies at the same time. So I need to take the war in their homeland cities, okay? So here my artillery are still in a huge battle against the American stack. The bad thing that they ha that he have main battle tanks and main battle tanks have a lot of HPs. So it's going, it's going to take a lot of attacks to take it down. It's going to take a while after all. The bad thing that uh, I didn't use strikers in this game, if I did use strikers in this game, I would destroy him, literally. I would destroy him. But um, I don't use strikers more often in the game. Sometimes uh, I rely more on the helicopters because if your enemy have SAMs, your strikers would be useful. You use less. So I always try to use my chances with uh, Helicopters, but it always depends on your enemy's uh, defense, defenses. If your enemy have SAMs, use helicopters. If your enemy have mobile anti-air, that's a little bit tough because mobile anti-air attack both uh, fixed-wing aircrafts and rotating-wing air aircrafts. So in that time, you will use uh, armored or you will use support such as artillery. Let's sail to the capital Washington. I need to take it from Rogue and establish an airfield or an airport there to facilitate to send my um, land forces there because this war against the United States is taking ages there and it's taking a lot of time. I need to finish it once and for all. I'm going to send a huge land stack, that artillery division that you saw earlier. I'm going to send it there and I'm going to send it straight to San Luis, his second capital that he established. And when I take down his second um, capital, checkmate. But first I need to get rid of this stack that is advancing toward my uh, homeland city. It's tough. Due to the calculations and the math that I did now, I'm not going to save my homeland city there. It's going to be taken, the city of Malania. I'm going to, lo to lose it because I have nothing to do to him at this stage. My rocket launchers, they will produce some damage, but not the required damage to take it down. You see, it had a lot of HP, so I'm going to not going to take it down in time. I'm going to sacrifice that city, no problem, but nothing more. I'm going to stop him. By the time he took he took down that city, my helicopters, the other helicopters I'm going to send, they will be in the capital Luanda. And with the helicopters, he will fall so quickly because you know that uh, the main battle tanks they don't have defensive abilities, so it's going to be. A matter of time to take him down. You see, uh, our resources is uh, amazing. We have uh, 36k uh, supplies, 50k um, components, 85k fuel. This is what happens when you annex a lot of cities, a lot of uh, conquered cities. 
because they will boost your production. Now I never stop my production. Every city that uh, finishes producing, it starts to produce something else. I never stop. I never get a shortage of supplies or a shortage of resources. That's when you know how to manage your resources and know how to especially focus on the strategy that you will follow your game. You see here France has already landed in North Africa and another problem is going to come for us soon because if I will be able to finish the United States now I have to think about France and Belarus that they landed in North Africa and they will take everything from me there because I am having a huge battle against the United against the United States so if I take him down it's my bounty and it's my reward to take his conquered lands of course but now you see that France is coming so heavy in north of Africa and he is taking all of those empty American lands there that is so unfair that is so unfair but we will manage and we will see what will happen okay So you see here that I already decided that this city of Milan is going to fall. I'm going I in the second I went to that city of Kikwit and annexed it. I put it to annex because of course when my city is going to fall, the supplies production is going to fall so heavily. But I need to stabilize it and don't let it fall so much. That's why I decided to annex another supply city. The city of Hawaii is still under a huge attack there from my stack. The helicopters are taking ages to refuel. They are taking ages. Please move, please. Next time I'm going to make in my next game in my future I'm going to make a combo of helicopters and strikers I'm not going to play only with helicopters because they are so heavy they are so slow it's so annoying please fly okay finally finally okay I'm going to give the order for the artillery to engage good job good now I don't have to get back to that city or attack I'm not going to engage this American stack I'm going to change first the airport because if I engage it will refuel again in the city of Milani and the American stack will catch up to me there and it will kill me kill my helicopter my only helicopter in the region so I'm going to change the airport there and attack from the second airport so these are a lot of details that you need to think about during the war you see here my rocket launches I'm going to mobilize them in the province in the mountains because I will get 25% bonus attack in the mountain so I'm going to mobilize it in the mountain there you see it is now already in the mountain and it have the 25% bonus also these are a good strategies to use the geometry of your homeland nation my homeland nation have a lot of um, open lands. Actually, Angola have everything. It have um, jungles, it have uh, forests, it have open lands and mountains. We don't have uh, deserts, but we have the open lands. So, open lands are good for the main battle tanks. I don't have them. The mountains are good for the artillery. I have them. So, I'm going to use the artillery. So this is the compromise of the geometry of your nation and how you use every province and every um, geology there. This is one of the longest wars I'm having and this is another stack advancing towards my homeland city. Oh God. I didn't even kill the first one and the second one is coming. The good thing is that the second one is already exhausted, but well. I'm going to send this uh, multiple rocket launcher to start uh, attacking it. The helicopters are soon there, so I'm going to gather five gunships. The five gunships will do a good work with the first stack. 
and they will take it down. The second one, I'm going to give the order for the artillery to take care of it and we'll send support also from this one infantry and one mobile on the air to intercept the road. Eight against infantries, helicopter gunships. This is so exhausted, so it's not going to pose a huge problem for us. It will be only a matter of time until it gets closer. So now, the gunships are deployed. Make me proud, please. The rocket launcher will be soon in range. I'm going to keep it out of the forest because it's, it will have um, a penalty on the attack, of course. I will keep it in the open land to be safe. New York has been bombarded so heavily there, no more buildings. Another attack please to make sure that everything is destroyed. I'm going to the city of Anchorage in the north because it's the last remaining city that have all the, all the buildings intact. So I'm going to head for it so quickly. I have uh, a naval base level 3 and other things. So, we need to take it down. Here I'm cleaning the rogue, taking the cities for more resources because it's not finished. This game is so far from being finished. Another huge war is coming. Believe me, if I even succeed at taking down the United States without being collapsed, I'm going for France, for sure. It is now first of the table. I destroyed the X first, who is the United States. I was hoping that I will be the first, but France took all the lands, he came from behind, he uh, took advantage of my war against the United States, and he is taking empty lands, easy fish, and he is first. So after this devastative long war, we need to recover so quickly. Okay. So here we is the tank division, which is also getting so exhausted by the, uh, the multiple rocket launchers. Now it is getting is going to be engaged by the gunships. Uh, 75 HPs. Now 46.7 HPs. That's good. Thank you. Only when but one battle tank and one infantry remaining there, and two one remaining in the other stack. So in the city of Anchorage, I found some uh, naval defenses there in front of the city and I'm engaging immediately in this moment. It's only a matter of time until the city of Anchorage will fall. And the naval defenses there, they will be, they will fall also because after what I saw, the level 1 corvette and the level 1 frigate in the other part, <laughs> it's outrageous. I'm going to send back my artillery now to the capital and gather a good stack. Now everything is cool, we managed to take down the United States and this is his surrender. Sorry I did not see, peace, sorry, it's too late. Now France is first, I am second, he is 1000 points, Syria third and to be honest it's going to be tough, France is so strong. I already saw some of his troops and uh, he has navy, he has uh, destroyers, he has a lot of things and I'm going to need 
a lot of time before I even think about a second him, so I'm going to produce a lot of more troops. You see here that the United States has changed his status with me to peace, that's why the map is not red anymore because he changed his status to me with peace, but I'm still in war with him, you see? Here I am taking his lines, I'm still in war with him. So it's his way to ask for peace, but no, I'm going to refuse. Let's continue and let's destroy him. Now let's go for the level 2 mobile on tier and the attack helicopter. It's time for some attack helicopter. You see attack helicopters are very good against armored. They require level 2 uh, uh, air base, sorry, air base. And yes, they have good abilities against armored and they are very strong. Here my ultimate land stack with multiple rocket launches, mobile ONTS and infantry has landed in the American continent and now full direction to San Luis, the second capital that I spoke about earlier. Now he have some infantry is there, I'm going to send my navy for support. Also the city of uh, Los Angeles, I'm going to take it and let's bombard the city of Portland. Hawaii is destroyed, Anchorage is, de is destroyed, all of his coasts are destroyed. Actually now he surrendered. The United States, from his uh, messages, he actually surrendered and now it's only a matter of time we take down his lands and we continue in our campaign. But first I need seriously to take down his other capital. And like that, checkmate as I said earlier. Let's take first these infantry in New Orleans. And my ultimate stack is going... The only thing is uh, missing from this stack is the mobile anti-air to be honest. Because I didn't produce it yet. I didn't have time. It's under process for sure and in the upcoming parts and in the next wars we will have the ultimate army, don't worry, I promise. We are so grateful that we didn't lose our capital in this game because if we lost our capital it would be such a tragedy for us. But we did manage perfectly to take down those American stacks that are advancing to us and keep our nation intact and safe. The Angolian Empire. Wakanda forever! I'm going to gather now my land troops in the capital and try to form the future ultimate land stack. Now I'm going to organize my troops and reorganize a full strategy for the Europeans because now I took down the United States, also Brazil, but the other coalition contain France, Belarus, Finland and Syria. These are some serious players and they are active, they are playing together there, they are eating the north of Africa all together, province by province, and this is the number of casualties between me and the United States. Angola 16k, United States 95.780 casualties. It's almost 100k. So this is the result of our war against the United States. Angola, 5 homeland cities. United States, 11 homeland cities. And this is the result when you know how to play. Bye bye.